Mm-hmm. Huh? Oh, hey, companions. Didn't see you over there in the side behind that board. What uh, what are you doing? Oh, you're hiding out because... What's that? The, you, there was a Bannon announcement today from Wizards? Oh. You know what? Now that you mention it, I did read something about that. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, they nerfed your mechanic. Yeah. I know. Um, so, you know. You know what that means. What am I doing with this? Oh, uh, well, you know, you know what they say, it's nerf or nothing. <laughs> Let's boogie. Hello, and welcome to High Ground MTG. I'm one of your co-hosts, Kai Guy, and that's right. Today was the BNR announcement for Wizards of the Coast. And affecting modern most specifically, as this is the format that we play most, uh, companion has been, that's right, nerfed. Uh, so now the way that the companion mechanic works is that it will cost three mana to move your companion from your sideboard to your hand, and then from your hand you can play it for its casting cost. This obviously brings the power level down a lot. But lucky for us, we get to explore pre-nerf power uh, up until Wednesday. So, doing a one-time video for pre-nerfed uh, Luris in a shell that I built as soon as I realized that this was something that I could do. I thought it was going to be really fun. Uh, I decided to build Jund. And no, not that Mishra's bobble nonsense. I built... Aether Vial, John. Yeah, check this out. Mwah. One of my all-time favorite Magic the Gathering cards. That's right. We are an aggro, if you will, uh, John list. And so what does that mean? That means that we're playing more creatures and relying on all of their unique abilities. Now, we're not playing all creatures, uh, especially within the John colors. We have a lot of good utility things that we can use um, and take advantage of. So, something that's really great here is we have, you know, the basic Jund, the basic Jund, you know, land base. Um, we are playing, once again, snow-covered lands by the amazing, illustrated by the amazing Elena Danner. Ah, it's one of my favorites. Um, and let's see, let's talk about the creature list. So, starting at the bottom, we've got a one-drop. Bomat Carrier. Now, why this card? <sighs> Listen, there's some synergies with the deck. Not a lot, but there's a little bit. So, Bomat Carrier synergizes with, hey, the Grim Flare. Shout out to Grim Flare MTG. Check his channel out. It does a lot of amazing black green rock decks. Uh, totally great. Um, but this card, uh, if we can get Delirium turned on, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Having a 1-mana artifact creature, being able to get an artifact in the graveyard and a creature in the graveyard, and be able to sacrifice it at any point that we want, uh, is pretty sweet. So, that synergizes with Grim Flare over here. And it's just, you know, a 1-drop. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's get him. Get him, get him. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll have... I'll, I'll come back to this later. Uh... Place at a DCs, that's right. Dark Confidence. Uh, everything is super cheap in this deck, so it's pretty easy to be an auto include. Couple of Scoozes. The OG monster himself, Tarmogoyf. Uh, running a couple of Kroxa. Uh, pretty easy easy to summon uh, out of the graveyard. This is some Spice Shovel Bone of monsters. Um, Basically, if we can put a bounty counter on opposing creature or planeswalker and we're able to destroy that creature, we'll be able to gain three life. That's right. Three life. And, ow, my finger. Uh, <laughs> uh, and draw a card. So, source of card advantage and life gain, which is really great. In order to help facilitate that, I've put four fatal push and four lightning bolts in the deck as just top removal spells in their class for uh 
green and black. You know what I really wish? I wish that they would print a one mana, like, fight card. Instant speed. Target creature fights target creature that you don't control. And, like, target creature gets plus three, plus zero, or something like that. Like, a one mana removal spell for green. But, you know, it's the color pie, so things gotta be balanced. Whatever. Uh, I already talked about the old GF Grim Flayer from Eldritch Moon. Um... Super fun. Uh, being able to filter out my graveyard, filter things in and out of my graveyard works really well with Luris. So I could put a creature into the graveyard if I... Oh, I should probably put one of him back in there. Uh, I can put a creature back into my graveyard or into my graveyard and then get it out with Luris. Um, if, if that is an opportunity cost. So it's super... Like I said, there's some synergies. Uh, Ren and Six... Obviously, two mana Planeswalker. We can cast it with Luris if it goes to the graveyard. Why not? Playing three of them. And one of the best commands uh, in all of Magic, Culligan's Command. Uh, this also really works. If we lose Luris, we can get Luris back uh, to their hand, and then we can cast it and go on and on. So we got all this. It's pretty fun. Uh, got a couple of Graph Digger's Cage. Uh, Shadow Spear, Slippy Bogey Boys I've seen running around in the meta, so I just want to be prepared for that. Um, also, the uh, lifelink is pretty relevant, and it's low opportunity. Obviously, Alerts of the Dream Den. This is pre-nerf, so a couple of Collected Brutalities, uh, a couple of Collector Oofs to shut down Tron, yada yada. It also works well with Aether Vial, kind of, because after we get it in with Aether Vial, Aether Vial won't work, so... Uh, Assassin's Trophy, uh, just a good catch-all for everything. Pillage, again, Tron, that sort of thing. Uh, Maelstrom Pulse, uh, again, just tons of catch-alls. And EE, again, like I said, a catch-all. So let's just find a match and play a game, shall we? That's what you came here to see. Oh, check it out. Our Sanctimonious co-host, Spiny Mouse, is here. Maybe we will battle him at some point. Um... Check out the Battle Bond series for that. He and I go at it. Uh, now's obviously a good time to tell you to subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share, all that fun stuff, all that social media nonsense. Uh, we've got Twitters at High Ground MTG. Um, that's primarily it, when we release a video, it should be there. Um, hit that bell icon, all that stuff. You already know. So we lost. Thank you uh that was supposed to be sincere that sounded really insincere i'm sorry thank you for um oh, that sounds really fake genuinely like if you watch these videos let us know you know we're doing it for fun but we like it when people get super into it uh we lost the die roll unfortunately Look, looks like doctor elbows <sighs> looks like they are a Luris deck as well this isn't a bad hand i wish we didn't have two aether vials All right, we will we'll keep this hand. We can go turn one, turn one snow covered forest into turn two red and six fetid pools, bicycle land. It's not even a tricycle land. Okay, fetid pools for Doctor Elbows. You know I've been playing a lot of Doctor Mario uh, on my phone, um, and I started thinking today. I'm gonna play this fetch land and we're gonna get I think I wanna just get a stomping ground, green red. Yeah. Yes. Uh where was it going with the Dr. Mario tangent? Uh oh yeah, that's right. So I was like, so you have Dr. Mario, right? And now there's all these like like but he was also but Mario was also a plumber, so Sorry, let me, um, so, it, yeah, so, he was also a plumber before he was a doctor? Like, what would you rather be? Would you rather be a plumber or a doctor? And I started thinking about it, and I was like, sure, like, doctors, like, you save lives, and that's really great, but, like, aren't, like, plumbers, like, the unsung heroes? They're able to fix pipes? They're handy all the time. Uh, they don't need, I mean, they just need 
specialized equipment. People have that kind of stuff just hanging around their houses, wrenches and things to help repair pipes and all the other stuff. I don't know, like being a doctor, being a doctor would be tough. I think it would be. God bless all the doctors working hard now. Like not easy. All right, I'm gonna play Kroxa here. Have them discard. See how you like it, suckers. Though, if they are able to cast Luris, it might not be such a bad thing. Anyways, food for thought. Plumber or doctor? Plumber, Mario. Looks like they discard a Misty Rainforest. Going to come back. Do, 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 do. Cracking a blood stain mire, old docky elbows. I like this Ravager of the Falls. Steam vents for our opponent. Looks like they might be a Grixis deck. Definitely a Grixis deck. Ooh, Dreadhorde Arcanist. Okay, okay. Can respect that. I feel like this is a very like this card is gonna come through in a big way in some at some point in modern. Like I like it's always on the fringe, right? Um of decks. Opponents down to twelve too. Something to think about. Oh. Thank you. Okay, well, we'll have Spell Pierce Mana up in case they try and fetch out for something. Maybe like a Watery Grave. Okay, so that's gone. I'm going to play another Vile past the turn. See, this is where a at Carrier would get really good. We'd be able to swing a couple times with Bombat and incur card advantage and then just sack it and then draw those cards. Steam Vents, tap in. Another Dreadhorde Arcanist. Okay. Looks like our Grim Flare is already a 4 4, so that's great. Grim Flare could also die to a Fatal Push here, but they have two cards in hand, so we'll see. But I haven't had a creature on the field, so. They could push here. Or Bolt. Well, they can't Bolt. I mean, they could, but it's a 4 4, so. Also, if they swing and they try to Thought Seize, it's. Fine with me. That one stays the same. That one goes up. Again, Aether File, one of my all time favorite Magic the Gathering cards. No. DC, that's pretty good. Let's see. Red. I need red black. Black black. I need red black. Oh, I do need to no. Yes, I do need to pay. We'll cast Luris. We'll see if it gets if it just bites the dust. Again, I'm pretty sure they would have fatal pushed here on this last turn. This could die to a lightning bolt, so I don't want to get any immediate value, which is fine. Alright, we're gonna swing in with the old Grim Flare. Grimmy, the grimmest of grims. Could be looking down the 
again, looking down the barrel of a bolt. Nope, swamp. Fatal push. Fatal push, Lurus. Revolt. No, they're just gonna fatal push. That's fine. Okay. This will be interesting as they'll swing with Dreadheart Arcanist, and I think they'll be able to cast Fatal Push again, so this isn't very good for us, unfortunately. Not to mention they have their own Lurus they can cast, so. Again, that's the power. Power of nerf time. Yeah, they're going to choose push. It's not good for us. That's okay. So why I think this card is so good. I don't think it works like that. Oh, I think they... I don't think it works like that. I think something, I think Revolt had to happen before. Oof. Interesting. Maybe that was a shame scoop. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. You gotta, it's, that's a tricky thing. Tricky, tricky thing. Uh, let's bring in EE. -E. Some good old fashioned removal. Some good old fashioned removal. Bring in a couple assassin's trophies. Uh, looks like they have more than one Dreadheart Arcanist. What was that? What happened to my voice? Uh, okay. Two. We're on the draw? I'm gonna drop a couple of vials. Okay. Yeah, that was definitely a biff from our opponent, unfortunately. Um, you know what? It's too late. I was gonna add the spear, just for funsies. Uh, but... No dice. All right, waiting for Dr. Elbows. Dr. Elbows. Anyone else like The Rock when he, like, goes into, like, you know, full, like, wavy balloon man when he goes in for the people's elbow? The most electrifying man in all of sports entertainment. Lurus. Lurus is actually a cat nightmare. Not an electrifying rock thing. That's pretty good if they don't have discard for two turns. Yeah, we'll keep this hand. Island by Therese Nielsen. The old Guru Island. <coughs> oh. All right, going to my turn. It's pretty good. Uh, we'll play Black Cleave Cliffs and pass the turn. They could opt here, or they could thought scour. There's any number of things that they could be doing here. Opt, thought scour. Lightning bolt and deprive. Bolt's pretty good if they are able to drop Arcanist. The goal is to get Ren and six down. Oh, that's really good. Interesting. You know, that's not a bad piece of tech with with Lyris. That's actually really smart. So they have Deprive mana up, which is very interesting. Since it's a one and done, I'm going to s try and drop right in six. I, this could be a complete blowout and probably isn't the right way to do it, but... Let's see. I got black. Yeah. We want a stomping ground. Yes. Green. I'll force them. They gotta have they gotta have an answer right now. It could be a deprive. Which would be great to slow them down one turn. Okay, so that sticks, and then I'll either force them to use it or they don't use it. Yep. See, I just didn't think it was enough opportunity to use it there. So we totally stole that turn with no answers. Okay, opt. They're digging for something. They're also down to 
four cards, four or five cards. So, all right, coming around the river bend. Once again, I'd like to say that High Ground MTG is sponsored by nobody. That's right. If you want your ad space in here, just get a hold of us at High Ground MTG. I'm sure that we can come to some sort of arrangement, some sort of agreement to sponsor the channel. Okay, Arcanist coming down. That's fine. That is actually not too shabby. Okay, back to our turn. Ooh, this is really good. So I'm gonna fatal push here. Let's see if they have an answer for this. Nope, that's okay. They could have an answer to my Goif. All cards from target player's graveyard, so. And then we'll just up this for no value. I guess there's a, there's a, there's an argument to be made that maybe I should have used wooded foothills to get a land, but also black cleave cliffs would have come into play untapped. I don't, or tapped. I don't want that, so. Another land, looks like they're up to Cryptic Command mana as well, if that's something that they're playing in this deck. It's pretty fun. Ooh, looks like we have Shethel, Bane of Monsters. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat. I should have played a land first. That was definitely a mistake. Getting in there for three. We'll fetch. I mean, even now, if they crack it, it doesn't really feel. Get back wooded foothills. They're probably thinking if it's worth cracking this. It could very well be. I'm almost close to ulting, ulting this too. Looks like they're fetching with their polluted delta. Watery grave for Doctor, Doctor, elbows. Doctor elbows. Is it resolve? Am I getting that land back? What's going on? No! Destroy target creature with CMC. Interesting. Okay, so they go drown and lock. That's fine. So I'm going to just drop my double creatures here. See if they try and counter this. I was born in Gotham. Shovel man of monsters. I must break your back, Batman. <laughs> Such a missed opportunity to like put a mask on his face. Also, does anyone else think he looks like he sort of looks like Craven the Hunter from Spider-Man. Like, serious Craven the Hunter vibes. All right, Craven sticks. We're going to drop Glyph, too. All right, double threats on the board. And if they play a creature and I'm able to get rid of it with Bolt, we're going to draw a lot and gain some life. So you guys will be able to see, guys and gals, sorry. Uh, so everyone will be able to get to see Shovel's special ability. Now I sound like Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Muscle Bruce, you shan't do that. Is that, is that British? 
You shant? What is shant? Shant? Who knows? We're just waiting for Dr. Elbows. <laughs> just like a doctor to leave you waiting. Let's see what I got. Damnation? Young Pyromancer. Interesting, interesting. I'll be able to take care of that. Depends on what they play here. They have two mana up. They're also a blue deck, so keep in mind that Force of Negation is also a thing in modern. So, but that would be like a two for one. -ing. Opt, okay. Get a redraw. You get an elemental, that's fine. It's great because Ren and Six can ping elementals all day. Uh, one black mana. What are we playing with that? Fatal push? What are you fatal pushing? Oh, uh, they're fatal pushing Bane. Okay. But we're going to lose Bane, unfortunately. But the beautiful thing is next turn I'll be able to play Luris and then I'll be able to play Bane. I also think I'll be able to get rid of everything. Well, they scooped the match. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a rock on a hard place sort of thing. So what are you going to do? <clears throat> uh, I was waiting for our opponent to see if they were going to say anything more. With us. GG's. So, anyways, so yeah, that's the um, that's the deck. Uh, pretty fun little little deck. Unfortunately, uh, you know they're nerfing the they're nerfing the mechanic, and that's uh, that's sort of how it goes. Um, you know, it all the all of the companions just kind of running rampant over over modern. So. What are you gonna do? You know, uh, gotta change things. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how this affects modern and the meta uh, going forward. So, anyways, thank you for joining me here uh, on High Ground MTG, and I we hope that mm, I gotta figure out a way to close these things a little bit more gracefully. <sighs> really working on it. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. It's bye-bye. Um, hold on. Let me try it again. And this will, all be in, this will all be in the video. Thank you for watching. Until next time, we hope that you have the high ground. Bye-bye from the Kai Guy. And then look the camera and say bye again.